I see trees that are green, rare roses too, and I see them bloom for me and for you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, I see sky. When I was young, I liked to fish. Basically, back then, that's about all we had to do for entertainment. I always fished with my uncle, Uncle Burl. My grandmother raised him, and we ran around together, and we, we fished together. <laughs> A lot of times, we never caught any fish. We'd go back and my dad would say, how many fish did you catch? And we would say, well, we never caught any. One time we said that and he said, I'm gonna tell you a place to go and I guarantee you'll catch fish. And we said, well, where's that? And he said, the mouth of Beaver. Hmm. He said, I'm the only one that knows where the mouth of Beaver is, where this fishing hole is. And I'll give you directions. He said, all you do, you pass Granny's house and you drive until you see the Golly River. And when you see the Golly River, pull off the road at a place where you can get over the hill easy. And we did that. He said, after you get to the river, walk down the river. Walk down the river until you see Beaver. Well, it was a beautiful day we took off. The sky seemed so blue. Those white cumulus clouds everywhere. It was a fall day, the leaves had turned. And we was walking down the gully and lo and behold, there was Beaver Creek flowing into the gully. He said, when you see that, turn up, walk up Beaver Creek. Walk and as you're walking, keep an eye off to your left. And when you see a bench rock, a rock that looks like a bench, go there, fish there. And we walked out there and the water was swift and it flowed into a small pool of water and it flowed up under that bench rock. It was sort of chilly and we built a fire, we gathered some wood and we built a fire beside the creek to warm ourselves. And we fished. And every time, I'm not exaggerating, every time we threw in, we caught a fish. We caught red eyes, we caught bass, we caught native, native trout, we caught small fish, we caught larger fish, we caught fish all day. Neither one of us wanted to leave. We didn't want to leave, we wanted to stay right there. But it was getting dark and we had to leave. That was a place in time that I didn't want to leave. That was a situation, an activity in time that I didn't want to leave. Those times, those places are few and far between. It was a wonderful experience, and I still remember 
if even to this day, even the leaves flowing from the sky and landing on the pool water. I remember everything about that. I have never forgotten. Jesus was preaching at the Decapolis. He was preaching to Jews and Gentiles. And after he preached, the crowd was hungry and he performs a miracle with the fish and loaves. And then he dis dismisses the crowds and he tells his disciples to cross over the sea that he was going up on the mountain to pray. And later on that evening, the disciples were in the boat and they were crossing the sea and a great storm came. And it was about to sink the boat. They were fighting the storm, but they were losing. They were about to perish in the sea. And Peter looks and he sees, he sees something in the sea. And they were frightened because they thought it was a ghost. But then that voice, that dis distinct voice of Jesus said, it is I, be not afraid. And Jesus gets in the boat and, and the boat is still sinking. The storm is still uh, ravaging the place. And Jesus speaks the word, peace be still. Peace be still. And everything is calm. And the disciples say, what manner of a man is this that even the weather obeys him? They get to shore and the next day they, they start on a trip to Caesarea Philippi. Also Jews and Gentiles. And they walk through the city and there are all these statues and monuments to God. Greek gods, Zeus, all these gods. And you know the disciples were commenting on this about all these statues and these gods. And Jesus overhears their conversation. And he asks them the question, well, who do the people say that I am? And there was silence. There was silence. And then Peter Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter, but my father in heaven. And upon this, upon this, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Eight days later. Jesus goes to the disciples and he says, Peter, James, and John, come with me. Let's take a walk. And they begin walking, and all of a sudden, they're walking up this mountain. And I know one thing. I know one thing. Nobody likes to walk uphill. I don't like to walk uphill. You don't like to walk uphill. Nobody likes to walk uphill. And they were probably complaining, where are we going? Why are we walking up this mountain in the middle of the day? And when they get to the top of the mountain, things change. They look at Jesus and he is different. The Bible says he is transfigured. Nobody knows what that means. He was seen as he is in all of his glory. Bright. Bright as Venus. Bright as morning star. And all of a sudden... Peter, James, and John are watching all this. They are in awe. And then out of the past, thousands of years earlier they lived, out of the past comes Moses and Elijah. Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. And they are talking to Jesus. And we know what they were talking about. They were talking about the cross suffering, the agony that was in Jesus' future. And then it gets cloudy. It gets cloudy. And Peter's, Peter gets up and he says, Lord, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Matter of fact, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here forever. It's good to be here. This is a wonderful place. Let's just stay here. Let's build three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. 
And then the voice from heaven, the voice from heaven says, this is my son. This is my son. Listen to him. And as they were coming off the mountain, Jesus says, don't speak of this. Don't speak of this until after I have risen from the dead. You know, this week I had a graveside service. And at this particular uh, funeral home, this particular place, I always go an hour ahead. I always, I'm always there one hour ahead. I do that to talk to the owner of the funeral home. He's a wonderful guy. I've known him for years. And he always has a sack load of stories. He can just sit there and tell stories one after another. And I can sit there all day and listen to him. Well, we were talking this past week. And he looked at me and he said, Brent, I want to ask you a question. He said, no, it's personal. He said, but I want to ask you a question. I said, well, ask. He said, aren't you old enough to retire? I said, yeah. And I looked at him and I said, aren't you old enough to retire? He said, yeah, I'm 80 or a little better. I said, why don't you retire? He said, because what I do is very spiritual. And it's very holy. And it's very peaceful. And he said, I'm called to do this. And I looked at him and I said, you've answered your own question. And just then, uh, some of his helpers come in and said, we got to go. we got to go. It's time to go to the grave, graveside. And we went to the graveside. Something was different. Went to the graveside, and I got out of the car, and I saw down over the hill a freshly dug grave. And there were four chairs beside it. Four chairs. And it was another one of those days as the sky was blue with those big cumulus clouds floating. And when we got there, I had to be a Paul there. There was not enough people there to carry the casket. And as I was helping carry the casket over the hill, something happened. It's never happened to me before. It'll probably it may happen again, but it never happened to me before. As I was walking over the hill, I forgot everything I was going to say. Everything. Just went just floated away like those clouds. The only thing I remembered was the person's name that was deceased. <laughs> and I went down there and I spoke for 40 minutes. 40 minutes. I checked my watch as I left. 40 minutes. My sermons only last 20, sometimes less than that. But I spoke for 40 minutes. Lord help me and put all that in my mind. And the four people that was there, as I shook hands with them, three out of the four said this. This is what they said. They said, it's been wonderful to be here. See, it was the presence of the Lord was there. Wasn't very many people there. Five. But the Spirit of the Lord was there. Hmm. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, is a wonderful, peaceful experience. And it is a place. It's a place that you don't want to leave. Peter, James, and John didn't want to come off that mountain. They didn't want to come off that mountain. Jesus drug them off that mountain. They wanted to stay there forever. They wanted to build three houses and live there forever. That's what the presence of Jesus provides. And it's available to everyone. Amen.
I see trees that are green.